Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to the review of a watch that feels like an old friend to me, the Casio DW5600 G-Shock. Now I'm a big fan of Casios. I've looked at a bunch of them so far on the channel and I've got about a dozen of them in my personal collection, but I'm not a massive fan of the G-Shock range. They all tend to be a little bit too big for me physically and a little bit too Ginza nightclub, a little bit too much going on with them a lot of the time in terms of design but I've always had a soft spot for this 5600. I bought my first one about 10 years ago, half price from a high street shopping mall, and I loved it. It was a beta watch for me, it was a great second watch, but it died after about eight years. The module started eating batteries, so I put it in the bin. Now, I've actually featured this 5600 in two videos to this point. I featured it in an old $50 roundup video a number of months back, and I featured it in my Christmas gifts video. I was so impressed for finding it at $37 dollars on Amazon then that I bought one and this is it. Let's flip the camera and get into the review. So exactly how much Casio G-Shock do you get for $38.88 then? Well frankly I'm amazed you get one of these at all for that price. Standard G-Shock packaging here very much like the Casio packaging and you get a nice little plinth. Casio refers to this DW5600 on their website as the quintessential G-Shock, and I don't think they're wrong at all. I'll pop up pictures here of the original 1983 G-Shock 5000. Looks pretty similar. I'll pop up the first of the 5600 models that they released in 1987, and as you can see, it is virtually unchanged over the last 30 years. I'm not sure how many pieces of 1980s design still look as good 30 years on, but this for me is definitely one of them. So 43 and a half millimeters at its widest point right across its center there. It's about 46 mil lug to lug effectively though, because this does have integrated lugs and about 12 and a half mil thick if you're taking its thickest point as the, the kind of dial projecting protrusions there, but in spite of all of this toughness, it only weighs in at 54 grams. Just a remarkable achievement that they managed to get a watch as tough as this one to weigh so little. There are various torture test videos on YouTube. Uh, Casio were very proud of this one. Uh, one of their adverts featured it being hit at full pelt by an ice hockey player. No problems with that one. There's videos of these getting frozen. There's videos getting of these getting launched off the top of multi-story buildings. So they are definitely, definitely a tough little beater watch. I don't normally use the term beater. I think it's slightly disparaging and all beaters are relative after all, but I think this one definitely justifies the term beater. It was designed to take a beating. Classic G-Shock traits include those recessed pushers, so you're not gonna be pressing them accidentally. The raised bezel, covers that uh, protect the screen at least a little bit, and this integrated bracelet. Now the integrated resin band does not allow the watch to sit flat, and as a consequence, if the watch is off your wrist and falls from any height, it's not gonna land flat on the case back. Uh, again, part of the protection process, protecting the module, and there's obviously a good deal of uh, spongy protection material around the module itself to prevent damage in the event of a shock. And there is a quick look of the case back, just stretching the resin band to show you there. Stainless steel, screwed down, just using those four screws in the corner. It is fairly easy to take this one off yourself, should you require to change the battery. Batteries last about two and a half to three years in these ones. 200 meters water resistant, and advertising that this one has a module 3229 there, just the module derivations always found on the back of these Casios. Now they have updated these watches. There are various other 5600s other than the base model that I've got today. There are solar powered versions. There are even versions that are tuned to the atomic clock, giving you super accurate timekeeping, but not this one. That 3229 module is fairly basic, but will be definitely familiar to anybody who is used to these Casios. So one push for an alarm, just a single alarm. We've got a countdown timer here, a stopwatch there, and then back to the main timing screen with day, date, and day of the week displayed permanently at the top. One feature I always enjoyed with this Casio, slightly larger screen, starting the stopwatch there, is you've always got the permanent time displayed on the top right-hand corner. I used to wear this one running before I got the GPS sports watches that seem so prevalent these days, so I always knew what time it was as well as how long as I was taking to get anywhere. All adjustments are made using the top left pusher there, as you can see, and I'll pop up 
what is not quite a loom shot, but an electroluminescent shot, a decent amount of EL light from the pusher down in the bottom right corner, a nice easy watch to see after dark. And there it is on my 7 inch wrist. I think with these Casio G-Shocks, you don't wear them, they wear you. The integrated bracelet, very nice and with a curvature on the lug, but you still feel like you're wearing a bit of a plastic cuff. It doesn't conform to the wrist in as way as the thinner, softer resin bands or a rubber strap might, but that's not a bad thing. It definitely is part of the kind of chunky appeal of the watch and as mentioned, 54 grams is not an awful lot of weight. Now, it's a fairly simple tang clasp there. Well, not, nothing to write home about. It would have been nice if they'd signed it, but they haven't. But definitely for this price point, not something I'm gonna moan about too much. You can replace these integrated clasps. There are adapters you can buy. You can pop on a NATO strap, but maybe I would reserve that for the atomic models or the solar models. I think this one at $40 should be kept on its original band. So, um, that's about it. Not a long video today, it's a pretty simple timepiece and one I certainly enjoy very much. Downsides, well it's still a bit big and chunky even though it is about the smallest G-Shock you can buy unless you're getting into the baby G range. And well, as mentioned, my last one, the module started eating batteries. So perhaps there's a little bit of a question mark these days over some of Casio's products. Maybe not quite as reliable as they used to be back in the 80s when this one was in its heyday. But a great watch, I'm very happy to have one of these back in my collection again. But as mentioned right at the beginning, my G-Shock collection will stay at one, this one. So there you have it, the Casio DW5600. Bit of a special Casio for me. I think I'm gonna have one of these in my collection for perpetuity. Great beater watch, literally a beater watch. Great second watch as well. And I think definitely one of the more understated G-Shocks. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.